Now joined by Dairy Area Boys basketball head coach Tom Esposito. Coach, excited to have you join us today. Your team is playoff bound in your 16th season as the head coach at Dairy. First off, congratulations on the postseason appearance. What's it mean to just this team and, and really the whole program to, they, to make the playoffs, especially after the struggles you guys went through last year? Uh, thanks for having me, Jack. I uh, greatly appreciate it. And uh, uh, it means a lot. For, the, for this particular basketball team, uh, I don't know how many people realize that uh, as a JV team, this team did not win a JV game two years ago. Uh, they were thrown into the fire in a very experienced, veteran, talented section last year. We took some lumps last year, but we but our players got some valuable uh, learning experience. Um, like I said, they were thrown into the fire against some very good teams and uh, we we took that into our summer and our off season in the fall, and our guys have worked hard and um, uh, put ourselves ourselves in position for the to make the playoffs, and 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 we earned it, and and we're excited to be in the dance. Well, you mentioned how some of those players last year again getting thrown in the fire and a lot of inexperience, but it's been a whole year since then and a lot of time for those players to mature. Where have you seen those players really grow and improve really in the last year or so? Uh, I, I think the biggest improvement that um, several of our players have made uh, were with their individual skill development. And, and all the credit goes to Coach Polinski with that. He does a fabulous job with them. Um, we, we've had, I think, we, we, we counted over 70 workouts from May until the beginning of the season. And we had some very dedicated players uh, in Gabe Carbonara, Nate Papuga, John Wozniak. If they weren't at a basketball camp or a week-long family vacation, they were in the gym with Coach Poe with skill development. Um, in the weight room with Coach McLaren, he did a great job in the weight room with them. Um, so I, I think our overall skill development, because it translates into the type of offense that we run, uh, the guys have, have responded and, and, and we have to continue to work on on our offensive sets and this and that, and uh, but but they they did a great job of learning the new offense this year, and it translates a lot to their individual skills. Well, I know that you mentioned that this has been really, if you, you know, again, arguably the best offseason that you've ever had at Derry, and it's clearly shown, especially this past season. And I would say that, that, you know, your team definitely exceeded many people's expectations, and I'm sure your own expectations. Where do you feel your team really exceeded kind of those expectations the most and really, you know, maybe played a little bit higher up than many people anticipated? Well, I, I think we did. Uh, we played well for most of the season. Um we all know that we, you know, we talked about after we got the matchup yesterday against Mohawk, you know, I knew the guys would look at 19 and two right away. And, and, and I did too. I mean, it, it, it's understandable to do that, to check the record of your opponent. But we went through our season and we can, we can realistically believe that we are just minutes away from, from another six to seven wins. I mean, we, we lost to Shady Side in the last 20 seconds at Shady Side. We fortunately beat them at home. That was a big win for us. Um, we and, and uh, against Burrow at third place, we lost that game in about a minute and a half. You know, um, and just to start the season, we lost to United, who was ranked third in the state for most of the season, and and we were in that game until about under two minutes. And then there's, there was a couple other games that we felt, you know, just uh, if we take care of the ball a little better, South Moreland game was a perfect example. We, we lose 83 to 80, make 17 trays, and we lose by three because we turned the ball over 24 times. Um, so we're very close to being a 16, 17, 18 win basketball team ourselves. And, and our guys know that. And, and we just have to believe that come Monday night and, and you know, have the same type of performance and, and effort and enthusiasm and on Monday night against Mohawk. 
Well, I know that you definitely are carrying a lot of momentum on your side heading into the matchup with Mohawk. Winners of four of your last five. And for a coach like yourself that's, you know, again, been to the playoffs many, many times, has been a part of many different teams. How much does that help knowing that, hey, your guys are really rolling and clicking at the perfect time heading into the playoffs? Well, that was our goal. I, I You know, about mid-season, we dropped a couple games, you know, and, and we knew that we were a, a, a better basketball team than we were playing. Uh, at that time, and you know, I told our guys, we don't need the peak right now. It'd be nice to win games right now, but um, we don't need the peak right now. We need to peak in, in late, in mid to late January, and, and we did that. And our last couple games, we didn't do too much against Homer Center, um, and, and we were banged up as well. We haven't had Ethan Fry for nearly three weeks and um but we didn't show too much against homer and uh ligonier we did ligonier played a very good basketball game but it was a two-point game you know could have went either way i don't know how much that hurt us for the playoffs i think a couple other games the borough games could have hurt us with our seed but it is what it is and and uh we've already started uh watching our films that we had as of last night, and, and I got quite a few more today. So uh, the guys know the coaching staff's going to put their time into it. They're going to be very well prepared, and uh, we're going we're gonna to do what we do, and hopefully we do it uh, very well. Well, I know that the coaching staff has been putting in a lot of time, and you mentioned two players that put in a lot of time during the offseason, Gabe Carbonera as well as Nate Papuga. And they're two players, Coach, that, again, hovering around 20 points per game. And you don't very see that very often where you have two players on the same team scoring that much. What has that done for you as a coach in terms of kind of maybe diving a little bit deeper into the offensive playbook and allowing for your offensive offensive sets to maybe run a little bit differently with two elite scores? Well, we are fortunate. Uh, they're, they're really two complete different types of players. Um, Gabe has the, uh, the strength to... Uh, break his defender down and and attack the rack. And if he doesn't, he has one of the best pull-up jump shots I've seen. Um, he he gets it off quick. He elevates. Not too many of his defenders can elevate as high as he can. Um, get off the floor and and you know contest his pull-up jump shot. Um, Nate is a very good uh, shooter from the arc. Uh, he he when when Nate is filling it and and everything, he, he strokes it pretty well. Um, so, and Nate can get downhill a little bit as well. Um, Gabe can score at all three levels. Nate can score at, at all three levels, but, um, they feed off of each other. And, and we're very fortunate that our guys are very unselfish. You know, some may think that we have two 20 point scorers on our team that we constantly are looking to feed them the basketball, but Brady Angus is playing very well the past month of our season. And uh, he had 32 against Ligonier. And just in our meeting yesterday before practice, Brady doesn't expect to score 32 Monday night. I don't expect him to score 32 on Monday night. But he'll do whatever he has to do. And and, and uh, Brady gets after it defensively. Um, he's handled the ball much better the past month, month and a half. Uh, he can get downhill and and create some some issues. And, and we're just a very unselfish basketball team. And... Um, you know, it's nice to know that on any given night, and most nights we did have Nate and Gabe, you know, getting us anywhere from 35 to 45 points a game. And and we fed off of that, and we preached to our other players that, you know, they're going to get their opportunities, but they're also going to be looking for you. So you got to be moving your feet and getting yourselves in scoring positions. And, and uh, there were some nights we had three scores in double figures. Um, couple nights maybe four but uh they're very unselfish um and and then and as a coach you like to see that and i was just talking to pitt's assistant coach last night and and they're they're very much the same way we were talking about how how it makes it just a little bit easier as a coach whenever your team shares the basketball and and, are, and they're unselfish well, Coach, we know that you have a very big game coming up against Mohawk, and before we get you out of here, just want to hear, what do you think will ultimately be one of the most deciding factors, if not a major key, in, in you all pulling out a victory on Monday? Uh, there are several. Um, 
from watching the uh, just the films that we've watched thus far. Uh, one of the biggest thing is having Ethan Fry back. We're not very deep. Um, there were games when Ethan's been out that we've played five guys. Um, I've noticed in the films thus far that Mohawk has been playing eight or nine guys, but not for very long. Um, they're very quick. They push the ball in transition. They have a very good point guard. Um, and uh, Rhoda is a very good point guard. He attacks the rack hard and aggressive. And if he can't, if he can't finish at the rack, he's going to find an open shooter on the arc. And they love to launch the threes. So having Ethan back, um, Ashton Bagley has done a tremendous job for us. He's like our garbage man. And, you know, he doesn't say a word, but he, he works hard. He's about six foot and he's guarding six, four, six fives. Um, he, he, he's done a great job. John Wozniak has had a very solid season for us, but, um, it's going to come down to our depth, you know, and how quick Mohawk pushes the ball in transition, but, our guys are in pretty good shape. We need to take care of the rock. And, and obviously, we've got to shoot the ball well. Well, Coach, we wish you all nothing but luck moving forward and into Monday's game against Mohawk. And again, we thank you so much for stopping by today. Well, I greatly appreciate it. And uh, I wish all the teams in, our, in Westmoreland County the best of luck. And uh, let's see how many teams we can get the round to. 